Disney, my first cuddle bedtime storybook. Disney, Mickey and Friends, Chef Mickey. Mickey was excited. He was cooking a romantic dinner for Minnie. Daisy, Donald, and Goofy came over to help. What should I make? Mickey asked his friends. Hmm. Minnie likes lasagna, said Daisy. Donald had a different idea. He suggested a turkey. Goofy thought a salad would be good. What do you think I should do, Pluto? Mickey asked. Woof, woof. Pluto barked. You're right, Mickey said. I should make them all. Soon Mickey was very busy. Mickey looked at the clock. It was getting late. He still needed to set the table. I can help you, Mickey, Daisy said. Daisy pulled out the plates and glasses. Then she set the table, decorating it in all Minnie's favorite colors. Meanwhile, Goofy prepared a special fruit punch. He picked up the punch bowl and headed to the dining room. He didn't see Donald walking by with the salad. Crash! Goofy and Donald smacked into each other. Goofy fell into Daisy's beautiful table. Mickey raced into the dining room. He couldn't believe his eyes. Everyone's hard work was ruined. I'm sorry, Mickey, Goofy said. I didn't mean to ruin everything. I just wanted to help. Me too, Donald said. I wanted everything to be perfect. Mickey looked at his sad friends. It's okay, he said. I know it was an accident. They began to clean up the mess. Mickey was so busy cleaning, he forgot about the food. Everything got overcooked. The dining room was still a mess, and the food was ruined, too. What was Mickey going to do? Just then, Minnie walked through the door. Hi, Mickey, she said. Minnie looked around the messy room. Mickey was holding a burned turkey. Her friends were covered in food, and the table was a mess. Oh, Mickey, what happened? Minnie asked. I had everything planned out, Mickey told Minnie. I tried to make all your favorite dishes. I even asked Daisy, Goofy, and Donald to help. Uh, but then Goofy dropped the punch and Donald dropped the salad. I guess things got out of control. It's okay, Mickey, said Minnie. What's important is the time we spend together. Aw, shucks, Minnie, Mickey said. Thanks. But what are we going to do about dinner? Minnie smiled. I have an idea, she said. Mickey looked at Minnie and smiled. He had learned an important lesson. As long as he was with Minnie, nothing else mattered. Mickey handed Minnie a slice of pizza. You're right, Minnie, he said. This is the perfect night after all. Disney Bunnies I love you, my bunnies. Spring had finally arrived in the forest. Butterflies flitted from flower to flower, and robins sang cheerfully in the trees. Twitter tweet? The bunnies' day began just the same as always with a soft, cozy nuzzle, a filling of bunny tummies, and a big, strong hug. Soon, the bunnies hopped off to play. Mama does so much for us, Thumper said. Let's make her a basket. Thumper and his sisters hopped to it, searching high and low for twigs.
Scritch, scratch. The bunnies wove the twigs together. They made a basket as strong as their love for their mama. The basket was sturdy, but it needed something more. Flowers, Daisy cried. Sniff, sniff, pluck. The bunnies picked buttercups and daisies and lilies. Little Tessie even found some pink clover. They filled the basket with all the sweet-smelling flowers and made it beautiful for their mama. The basket was lovely, but it needed something more. Trixie hopped off. Soon she returned with a plump blackberry. Rhea smiled. Mama loves berries, she said. So the bunnies picked berries that were juicy and ripe and perfect for bunny tummies. They filled the basket with sweetness for their mama. At last, they were done. The bunnies took their strong, beautiful, sweet basket home to their mama. And their mama gave them something strong, beautiful, and sweet right back. A big hug. The bunnies snuggled in close. We love you, mama, they said. And I love you, my bunnies, their mama replied. Disney, Tangled, Rapunzel's Forest Friends. Rapunzel was having an amazing day. Everything around her was a discovery. She stopped to smell some flowers and picked a few more to add to her bouquet. These are so beautiful, she exclaimed. What are they called? Ah! A branch in the bushes had started to move. Rapunzel scrambled to her feet and hid behind Flynn. A small creature with long ears hopped out of the bushes. What is that? She cried. Rapunzel, meet the fiercest animal in the forest, a little bunny wabbit, Flynn said. A whole family of bunnies hopped out of the bushes and began playing together. Rapunzel peeked at them from behind Flynn. You're telling me that a tough cookie like you is afraid of a couple of fuzzballs? Flynn asked over his shoulder. Rapunzel didn't want Flynn to think she was afraid, so she slowly made her way closer to the bunnies and knelt down on the grass. They seemed just as curious about her as she was about them. Soon, she was surrounded by new furry friends. A chipmunk scurried out of its hole, and birds flew over to join the little group. They were playing hide and seek. Rapunzel had only been out of her tower a short while, and she was already having the time of her life. But Flynn wasn't having as much fun. Come on, Rapunzel called to Flynn. Don't stand there, go hide. It's my turn to count. Flynn laughed at the idea. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't do games, he said. The animals wanted Flynn to play too. The birds and the chipmunk brought over some leaves and twigs to help him get started on a hiding place. Then the bunnies and the deer tried to help. They wanted to build him a hiding place, but the animals had trouble covering him completely. And there was no hiding the scowl on Flynn's face. Never mind, Rapunzel said to her friends. I guess she really doesn't want to play. And with that, she led the animals away for another round of games. Rapunzel called back to Flynn. If you change your mind, we'll be over here having a wonderful time. Minutes later, she hurried back to show Flynn the new animal she'd found. I had no idea bunnies could grow so big, Rapunzel said to Flynn. That's no bunny, shouted Flynn. That's a bear. Then he spotted the bear cub's mama. 
In a panic, Flynn turned and scrambled up a tree. Rapunzel stood below with her two new friends. She didn't understand how Flynn could be afraid of such adorable animals. Oh, great, now you're hiding, Rapunzel teased. I guess you want to play with us after all. Flynn sighed. He started climbing down the tree. All right, fine, I'll play, he said as his feet hit the ground. You'll see, I'm excellent at hiding. He turned. Rapunzel was gone. So were the animals. I'm sure you are, came Rapunzel's voice from the bushes. But you'll have to find us first. Disney, Dumbo, Dumbo's snowy day. One chilly day, the circus animals were on their way to a new town. Their train was struggling to get through the falling snow. The train came to a stop and everyone waited for the snow to pass. Dumbo was happy. He'd never played in the snow. Mrs. Jumbo gave him a gentle nuzzle. Soon Dumbo got the hang of walking through the snow. All morning, Dumbo and his mother played in the snow. Suddenly, Dumbo slid down a steep hill, ending in a cliff. When Mrs. Jumbo reached the bottom of the hill, she realized she couldn't get back up. You will have to fly off and get help, Mrs. Jumbo said. So off Dumbo flew, as fast as his ears would take him. Dumbo raced to the train. Quickly, he gathered all the animals together so they could help. What are we waiting for? Timothy Q. Mouse cried. We've got to save Mrs. Jumbo. Dumbo led his friends back to the cliff. By the time they found Mrs. Jumbo, the windstorm had pushed her even closer to the cliff's edge. The animals knew they had to think of something fast. Oh dear, said the giraffe. How can we get down there to help? Timothy snapped his fingers. He had an idea. Everybody line up, he shouted. He ordered the animals to grab one another's tails. At the front of the line, the ostrich leaned over the cliff to take hold of Mrs. Jumbo's trunk. One, two, three, pull, Timothy yelled. The animals worked together until Mrs. Jumbo made it safely to the top of the cliff. But suddenly, there was a loud crack. The cliffside started to give way. All the animals tumbled together and rolled down the hill. Before long, they had become a giant snowball. How do you stop this thing? Timothy shouted. The snowball gathered speed until... The animal snowball hit the bottom of the hill and broke apart. Is everyone okay? Timothy asked. Fortunately, everyone was fine, just a little dizzy from their unexpected snow ride. All the animals began walking back to the train. That night, Mrs. Jumbo gave Dumbo a warm bath. Thank you for flying to find help today, Mrs. Jumbo said. Hey, don't forget about me, said Timothy from his teacup bath. I help too. Mrs. Jumbo nodded. <laughs> you certainly did. Thank you. Then it was time for bed. Dumbo snuggled up against his mother, and Timothy nestled underneath Dumbo's ear. Dumbo fell asleep right away. He was glad to be warm and safe with his mother as the snow fell gently outside. Disney, Pixar, Ratatouille, Sweet Dreams. Remy the Rat was very happy as the chef of his own little bistro. Late one night, Remy's brother, Emil, had just finished dinner there. I'll be up late cooking for the celebration tomorrow, Remy said. 
So sweet dreams, and no more eating tonight. Emil was very excited for the party Remy was having at the restaurant the next day. Remy was hard at work at the restaurant. The smell of delicious food wafted down into the sewers, finally drifting past the sleeping Emile's nose. Emile was having the loveliest dream, but when he smelled Remy's cooking, Emile was so tempted that he got to his feet, even though he was still asleep. Following his nose, Emile sleepwalked along the pipes until he reached Remy's kitchen. By then, Remy was taking a well-deserved break from cooking. He didn't see Emile sleepwalk out of a vent and onto the kitchen counter. Still asleep, Emile sniffed his way toward a large plate of fresh pastries. In his dream, Emile began to eat some garbage. But in the kitchen, he was eating the entire plate of treats. Soon, Emile had devoured all the food Remy had just made for the party. Emile sleepwalked back into the sewers. A few moments later, Remy returned to the kitchen. But instead of his wonderful baked goods, he found a plate of crumbs. Remy had a hunch who the culprit was, but he didn't have time to find out if he was correct, at least not right then. He had to make more food for the party. Emile woke up in a sewer tunnel, far from his usual sleeping spot. He had no idea how he'd gotten there. Then he noticed a feeling in his belly. But how can I be full now when I went to sleep feeling hungry? Emile wondered aloud. Oh, no! cried Emile, suddenly remembering the celebration. I overslept. I'm going to miss the party. And the food. Emile stumbled along through the pipes. He couldn't run as fast as usual because of his extremely full belly. Finally, Emile reached the rat colony. But when Emile tried to join the fun, he found his belly was too big to fit through the pipe's opening. Hey! Help! He cried. Remy looked over at his brother. You're stuck because you're so full. You must be the one who ate all my food last night. Uh, I did? Emile replied. All I remember is a dream of lovely smelling garbage. Garbage? Remy cried. It wasn't garbage, and it wasn't a dream. You ate all the desserts I made for the party. I'm sorry, Emile said. That night, Emile went to bed with a very full tummy. He had eaten a dish of Remy's delicious ratatouille on top of the desserts from the night before. Emile had sweet dreams about his next wonderful meal at the restaurant prepared by his brother, Remy. Disney, Winnie the Pooh. Good night, Roo. It was bedtime in the Hundred Acre Wood, but inside his cozy house, little Roo wasn't the least bit sleepy. I don't want to go to sleep, Mama, he told Kanga. Please tell me a bedtime story. All right, dear, Kanga said, and she began to tell Roo a story. Kanga finished her story and said, Good night, little one. But I'm still not sleepy, Mama, said Roo. Please tell me another story. So Kanga told another bedtime tale. But even after she told every story she knew, Roo was still wide awake. Oh dear, Kanga said with a sigh. I'll be back in a moment, Roo. Then she hurried off 
to seek help from her friends. The first ones to arrive were Pooh and Piglet. Pooh began to tell a tale about a land of honey. Are you sleepy now, Roo? Pooh asked, hopefully. Nope, Roo exclaimed as he hopped out of bed. Soon Roo was back in bed with a glass of warm milk. Shall I try my story next? Piglet asked uncertainly. Please tell it, Piglet, Roo begged. Piglet began to tell a story about bravery. Just then, something crashed into the room, but it was only Tigger, with Rabbit and Kanga right behind him. Hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo, Tigger cried. Did I hear that somebody needs a sleepifying story? Me, Roo cried happily. Tigger told him a story about a great bouncing race. Just then, Eeyore wandered in. That's not a proper bedtime story, Rabbit complained. Now stand back, all of you, and let me take care of this. You're going to tell me a story, Rabbit? Roo asked. Rabbit began a story about a hard-working rabbit who grew lots of vegetables. Before Rabbit could finish his story, Owl hurried in. I hear someone is in need of a story, he said. Thank you, Owl. Kanga said, although I'm beginning to fear that nothing will convince Roo to fall asleep. Once upon a time, Owl said. He began to tell a very boring story about a handsome and educated Owl. Roo laid back, wondering when Owl would get to the good part of the story. He closed his eyes and waited. Owl's story continued for quite some time. Before long, Owl had to raise his voice to hear himself over the chorus of all his friends snoring. Well then, Owl interrupted himself at last. He pulled the covers up to Roo's chin. Good night, Roo.